In the hallowed halls of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, a changing of the guard is on the horizon. It's a moment that might seem, to the casual observer, as routine as the changing of seasons. But make no mistake, dear reader, this transition is as significant to our economic landscape as the first cherry blossoms are to spring in Washington, D.C. Patrick Harker, the current president of the Philadelphia Fed, is set to step down on June 30th, 2025. It's a date that may seem distant, but in the world of central banking, where decisions ripple through decades, it's practically tomorrow. The board's announcement of a search for his successor is not just a bureaucratic formality. It's the opening salvo in a process that will shape the economic destiny of not just the third district, but the entire nation. As I sit here in my office, surrounded by the comforting smell of newsprint and coffee, I can't help but reflect on the significance of this moment. The Federal Reserve System, that enigmatic network of 12 regional banks and the Board of Governors in Washington, is more than just a financial institution. It's the beating heart of America's economic body, pumping the lifeblood of monetary policy through the arteries of our financial system. The search for Harker's successor is not merely about finding a capable economist or a shrewd banker. It's about finding a visionary who can navigate the treacherous waters of our economic future. The board chair, Anthony Abarguin, speaks of an open and inclusive nationwide search. But what does that really mean in today's America? In my conversations with economic luminaries and Main Street business owners alike, I've sensed a growing unease about the direction of our economy. The specter of inflation, that old bogeyman we thought we'd vanquished, looms large once again. The wealth gap continues to widen, threatening the very fabric of our society. And the challenges of climate change and technological disruption are reshaping industries faster than many can adapt. The next president of the Philadelphia Fed will need to be more than just a number cruncher or a policy wonk. They'll need to be a translator, able to communicate complex economic concepts to a public increasingly skeptical of institutions. They'll need to be a diplomat, navigating the often contentious relationships between the regional banks and the Board of Governors in Washington. And perhaps most importantly, they'll need to be a visionary, able to see beyond the immediate crises to the long-term health of our economic ecosystem. But let's take a step back and consider the broader context of this search. Over the past decade, the process of selecting new regional Fed presidents has become increasingly protracted. The appointment of Jeffrey Schmid to lead the Kansas City Fed took a staggering 14 months, a far cry from the swift two-month searches we saw in Dallas in 2004 or New York in 2009. Why the delay? Some might argue it's simply a reflection of our more deliberative, cautious times. Others might see it as a sign of increasing politicization of what should be an apolitical process. The truth, as always, likely lies somewhere in between. The increased involvement of Chair Jerome Powell and other Fed governors in Washington speaks to a recognition of the interconnectedness of our economic system. No longer can regional banks operate in isolation. Their decisions have national, even global, implications. The tightening of financial disclosure rules is a nod to the public's demand for transparency and accountability in our financial institutions. In an era where trust in institutions is at an all-time low, this is a crucial step towards rebuilding that trust. And then there's the push for diversity. It's a word that's become something of a buzzword in corporate America, but in the context of the Federal Reserve, it takes on a deeper significance. The Fed's decisions affect all Americans, from the Wall Street trader to the small-town shopkeeper. Shouldn't its leadership reflect that diversity? But as we push for a more representative Fed, we must be careful not to lose sight of the primary goal, finding the most qualified individual to guide our economic ship through the stormy seas ahead. The challenge lies in expanding our definition of qualified beyond the traditional Ivy League economist mold, while still ensuring that the chosen candidate has the expertise and vision necessary for the role. The next president of the Philadelphia Fed won't take their voting seat on the Federal Open Market Committee until 2026, but their influence will be felt long before then. They'll be joining a Fed that's grappling with some of the most challenging economic conditions in recent memory. The pandemic has reshaped our economy in ways we're still struggling to understand. The rise of remote work, the acceleration of digital transformation, the disruption of global supply chains, these are not just temporary blips, but fundamental shifts that will reshape our economic landscape for decades to come. Then there's the looming specter of climate change. How does a central bank factor in the economic impacts of rising sea levels, increasing natural disasters, 
and the transition to a green economy. These are questions that would have seemed outlandish to Fed presidents of the past, but they're now central to the role. And we can't forget the ongoing debate about the role of the Fed itself. Should it stick to its dual mandate of price stability and maximum employment, or should it take a more active role in addressing issues like income inequality and racial economic disparities? These are not just academic debates, but questions that go to the heart of what kind of economy and indeed what kind of society we want to build. As I ponder these weighty issues, I'm reminded of a conversation I had with a small business owner in Philadelphia's Reading Terminal Market. Amid the bustle of shoppers and the aroma of fresh produce, she spoke of her hopes and fears for the future. I don't understand all this talk about interest rates and quantitative easing, she told me. But I know that what happens at the Fed affects my business, my employees, my community. It's voices like hers that the next Philadelphia Fed president needs to hear and understand. The challenges facing our economy are too complex, too interconnected, to be solved by economic models alone. They require a leader who can blend rigorous analysis with genuine empathy, who can see the human stories behind the economic data. The search for this leader will be long and arduous. It will involve countless interviews, heated debates, and difficult decisions. But it's a process we should all be paying attention to, because its outcome will affect us all. As we look ahead to 2025 and beyond, we're not just choosing a new Fed president. We're choosing a steward for our economic future, a guardian of our financial stability, and a voice for our economic aspirations. It's a choice that will ripple through our economy for years to come, affecting everything from the interest rate on your mortgage to the job prospects of your children. So as the board of the Philadelphia Fed begins its search, let us all economists and laypeople, bankers and small business owners, policymakers and citizens engage in this process. Let us demand transparency, push for diversity, and insist on excellence. For in doing so, we're not just shaping the future of the Federal Reserve. We're shaping the future of our economy, our society, and our nation. The changing of the guard at the Philadelphia Fed may seem like a distant event, far removed from our daily lives. But in reality, it's a moment that touches us all. It's a reminder that our economy is not some abstract force, but a living, breathing entity shaped by the decisions we make and the leaders we choose. As we move forward into this uncertain economic future, let us do so with hope, with vision, and with the understanding that our economic destiny is, ultimately, in our own hands. The next president of the Philadelphia Fed will be a crucial player in shaping that destiny. Let us ensure that they are up to the task.